Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the X's and O's with Greg Cosell. I'm Doug Ferrer of Touchdown Wire on the USA Today Sports Media Group. That guy over there is Greg Cosell of NFL Films and ESPN's NFL Matchup. And as we like to say, there's another guy in the chat today, and that would be uh, Oregon quarterback Bo Nix, uh, one of the more highly prized quarterback prospects in this year's draft, and the draft is less than a month away. Bo, you've had, you know, the big season, Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year, Senior Bowl, uh, you know, pr- combine pro day. It's been kind of a, a tornado for you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm back in Eugene getting to uh, work with the guys a little bit more until until we head on. But, um, you know, we're excited for the draft, um, but, you know, mainly just trying to get ready for an upcoming season wherever we're going to be. Before we get into your process real quick, one guy you've been working with, and, and Greg and I are both very interested in this, is uh, Philip Rivers. Definitely one of the most intellectual quarterbacks of his era maybe ever. Um, really plumbed the nuances of the position. If you could talk a bit about what you've learned from Philip and how he's kind of accentuated your your process. Well, he's a, a unique story because, you know, he, um, you know, once he retired, he got down to South Alabama and now he's coaching high school football, which is something that, you know, very familiar. It's something I want to do, um, you know, at the end of my career. But um, he was fortunate or we were fortunate enough to to be welcomed into to his uh, backyard and go train with him a few times. And, um, he's got, you know, um, so much information that he can pass along. So all I wanted to do was just, um, you know, um, get as much as I could out of it and, um, you know, really listen to the little specific things that he said. Um, he talked about how to be a better teammate. He talked about how to be a better leader. Um, he talked about some X's and O's a little bit, but, it's kind of understood that, you know, once you're playing the game, you kind of understand that. And it's harder to to really elaborate on that unless you're just sitting down watching video or going over something specific. But I think the knowledge that he shared outside of, you know, X's and O's was what was what was most powerful. But, um, you know, it was it was fun. It was fun to, to get to know him. It was fun to um, listen to him. And, you know, the, the competitor and the fiery guy, the passionate guy that he is on the on the field is who he is, you know, out there when we're practicing and as he's being a coach so um, that was fun to see and you know he just ultimately just reminded all of us to to be ourselves and it was me drake may and carter bradley and he reminded us just to be authentic be yourself wow. and, go out there and uh and you know just just make the most of it and and uh just do what you can to be the best you can very cool well, i want to hand this over to my esteemed colleague mr cosell now because <laughs> we get really nerdy about football on our uh, video and podcast and greg is Greg wants to get into the process with you, so I'm going to hand it over to him. Yeah, but what fascinates me is, you know, because I sit and watch tape, you know, I watch NFL tape during the NFL season, and now I watch a ton of college tape. I think I've seen probably 15 or 16 of your games going back to, to 2022, uh, you know, at Oregon, and, and I think I've seen nine this year. So what always fascinates me when I'm watching tape is the process by which you're taught, because obviously, you know, everybody runs a lot of the same plays and concepts. So it's how are you taught, you know, sort of from day one, from install, what are you taught to look at? You know, how are you taught? Do you start with concepts? Do you start with what, what a defense looks like? How are you, how are you taught at Oregon this year? And I know you had a different offensive coordinator this year from your previous year. Yes, sir. So, realistically you look at it from a standpoint of like okay what's what's a pre-snap do you have like a yes no do you have a uh, a pre-snap decision and then after that you just find the post-snap indicator and see what you need to read so whether it's a, a run play you know you find the seventh offender in the box and how you're gonna you know adjust off of him whether it's a pass or whether you're uh, motioning somebody to block him or if you're reading him to uh you know have a um, quarterback run uh like his own read and then um, you know, that advances a little bit more into pass game. There's a, a little bit more that you got to take care of in the pass game with protections and then, um, you know, with the full the full concept and, and how it develops. But um, we're very structured on how, how we're taught. We, um, you know, taught the same things. And fortunately, we, we do a lot of, uh, you know, progression-based reads. So we're just going, you know, right across the board and, and with a few alerts and yes and no's. But um, ultimately, if you just find your indicators, find your keys, uh, you should be okay. Do they start by with the safeties, you know, whether it's a uh, two shell or, or single high, is, is that sort of your starting point? Yeah. You always want to find the boundary safety. Um, you always, always want to see, uh, you know, kind of where the Sam linebacker is. And then actually the, the linebackers will tell you quite a bit about, um, you know, coverage cause they, um, they can, 
um, disguise some run game blitzes, but they're not used to disguising uh, coverage. They're, they're going to get to their coverage because they know their weakness is, is in coverage, but DBs can, can disguise a little bit more. So um, between the linebackers, the boundary safety, and the Sam linebacker, you should be able to see um, all you need and then get some confirmation from either a corner or a field safety as the play is going on. Good. Doug, did you want to jump in here? Yeah. Um, one, and, you know, watching your, watching your tape this year and then rewatching it, obviously for this, uh, there are so many front and coverage switches in the NFL now where what you see pre-snap is rarely what you see post-snap. And in the league, that's really expanded as an issue for quarterbacks in the last few years. Do you have an ideal example in your mind of a play where you saw a defensive switch like that, where they were really trying to fool you, you figured it out in the moment, you, you deduced it based on whatever you saw and kind of exploited it in, in that moment? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, to be honest, it happens a lot in college too. Um, you know, college football, especially in the Pac-12, has gotten to where um, it's become a disguised, you know, very exotic uh, defense, exotic league. So I see a lot of, uh, you know, different rotations, see a lot of different defenses. And, um, you know, ultimately our defense probably does the most. So during practice, I've gotten a whole lot of reps of, of seeing our defense and seeing what Coach Landing you know, puts in on defense and, um, you know, the same stuff that he was doing at Georgia is what we're, we're doing here um, at Oregon still. So there's a lot of uh, pre-snap, post-snap changes uh, that happen. So that's why it's important to see, uh, you know, the boundary uh, safety and get a boundary indicator. Um, but there's several times where um, one doesn't necessarily come to mind, um, you know, right off the top of my head, but th there's a few that, that you know, you got to react based off of, of movement and, and one we'll get into, um, you know, kind of the, um, the motion play you were talking about at Texas tech where we, we go to four strong, they, they spin down to um, single high and, you know, pre-snap look could have been different and then they spin and then you got to see that and kind of go off of uh, rotation. Well, that, that raises a, an interesting question because you, you guys did a, a lot of what would be considered NFL stuff, you know, in your offense, there was a lot of shifts. There was a lot of motions, um, for you, how does that factor in? Because there's there's some quarterbacks, even in the NFL, that they don't want it, the offense to shift in motion. They want to come to the line. They want everything to be relatively static because then the defense doesn't normally move and they can get a good read on the defense pre-snap. But you you are played in a system where there were a lot of shifts in motions. Um, how did you feel about that? And did that change the way you saw things? That's a great question. Um I enjoy and I like using motions if it's going to put us in an advantage or if we know kind of what the defense will do. So we use a lot of motions to see some pre-snap indicators, you know, man zone, um, how to get matchups and how to get, you know, uh, leverage and, and those sorts of things. But um, we talk about that and discuss that throughout the week, how they're going to, you know, move to this motion, whether they're a rock and roll team or a bump team or a spin team. And, um, you know, for example, we were playing Cal, we, motioned over and back with the tight end got a man zone indicator they spun down and then spun back knew it was going to be single high um and then got the sloop set uh um, sam linebacker sloop cover three ish man match and it was um you know we hit the seam ball for a touchdown um you know early in the game and so that was uh you know an example of using motion to to find indicators but at the same time if, if we're just motioning to motion and look good then sometimes it can be a little tricky on a quarterback and, and uh, you know, cause when you move the defense is going to move their picture and um, it can be tough if you're trying to set like a protection or something and find your blitzers, but um, it's great for, for man zone indicators and um, you know, getting leverage and finding matchups. And uh, we did that a lot with Tez to move him around so we could find good matchups with him. And then um, you know, it, whenever we wanted to move, you know, Bucky or Tifer or somebody that um, you know, got a good, good uh, picture pre-snap. Um, but I think motions and, and uh, shifts are, are good uh, to keep the defense off balance. Defenses hate that kind of stuff. They have to practice it over and over, and then they got to, you know, adjust and communicate, and that's tough on them. So whatever we can do to make their, their job a little tougher, which is just a simple movement for us, you know, we're obviously offenses enjoy doing that. Now, you did a lot of no huddle and empty this past year. Is that in those situations, are you dealing with the protections? Are you setting the protections in those situations? Yeah, I set all protections regardless if it's empty or, or uh, whatnot. So I got final say. And 
Uh, we could be going from a, a Max Pro, like a slide protection, or um, even like a gap, like um, uh, run pass protection, and, and you can change it into something different if you're getting a, a, a bad look. Um, and so ideally, you know, you get up there and you, you say the original protection and ideally it, it sticks and you don't have to change anything else and, and you go. Um, but, you know, ultimately sometimes that, that doesn't happen because uh, the defense is, is uh, you know, they're uh, disguising and they're on scholarship too. So they got to get, um, you know, some post, post snap confirmation, <clears throat> but eventually they'll be in, they'll be set in their defense. They're going to have to get lined up and then I can, you know, change the protection, copy it. I can, you know, add somebody else to the protection. I can go to empty, whatever it may be. Um, I had a lot of, you know, leeway there and, and understood it and got us going. You like being an empty? You like empty sets? I do because they can um, – there's only so much they can do. They can play coverage. They can, you know, go out there and match players or they can just bring zero, and it's relatively easy to see. Uh, it's hard to do a lot uh, defensively out of empty, um, but it, definitely if you got the um, protection to do it and if you can get the ball out – and you know, get the space. I think it's a great for an offense. Doug? Great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, Bo, just one general question, uh, more like 30,000 foot question before we get to the plays. We got a lot to, to discuss. Five years in college, three at Auburn, two at Oregon. You've come so far as a quarterback in your collegiate career. Is there one thing you would attribute that to or, or moments where the light sort of went on and you hit a different floor in your development? Well, that's a that's a very unique question. I, I think um, you know, in, in five years with five different OCs, um, you got to really kind of, um, I don't know, you got to take it one year at a time. And every year, um, you know, I felt like I played uh, to the standard that I was given. So uh, my freshman year, you know, was able to go out there and we had a really good team. Uh, you know, one freshman of the year, and then uh, you know, go into the next year and it's COVID and you don't have a spring ball. And you know, that's tough for going into your sophomore year. They call it a sophomore slump. Uh, but it's even worse when you don't get practice time, uh, with a new OC, um, and a different football team. But, um, that was a, a fun year too, just, to, um, you know, it was a 10, 10 game sec schedule. So you were playing ultimately an NFL schedule. Um, and you know, we were, we were doing really well and, um, you know, had some good games Didn't have some, some great games. We played, you know, the national champion in, in Alabama and, you know, played a Georgia team that was really good. Um, and, you know, playing SEC teams is obviously, you know, a tough task. And then my junior year, I started to really, you know, play better and, and you know, got over a little hump and started to understand um, some things. And, and, you know, getting over the hump, I mean, like getting over the, uh, the different play calls and different, um, you know, schemes and all this kind of stuff that, that goes with learning something else. So by the time, you know, we get into the season and I start getting the feel of it, you know, start playing, um, you know, to my standard and start playing well. And um, and then I got hurt. So that, that kind of threw it off and, and kind of changed some things. But, um, you know, at that point, I felt like I, I had to, you know, make a, make a move um, in order to reach my full potential and to maximize my opportunity in college and to go compete for a championship. And, Oregon was a great place for that. And then, you know, I was allowed yeah, I was gonna to say that worked out pretty well for you. Yeah. Yeah. It <laughs> perfect. And uh, I had a lot of freedom, um, had ultimate control um, and they let me just go out there and really just be Bo. So um, I did progress over the years um, and, you know, um, you know, uh, experience helped a lot with that. Um, but I think that the narrative for some reason is that I, you know, made a huge jump and was a different quarterback. I, I was the same guy, had the same tools, had the same mind. Um, was just given a little bit more to, to, you know, let that flourish and let that go out there and really play and, and put on tape and perform. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, that's why you go through college. You go through college to enjoy those experiences and, um, you know, wouldn't be here without my time at Auburn and, and you know, all the things that I learned. Um, but I do think sometimes that's, you know, for whatever reason, Auburn's given a bad light, but we had some uh, some good games at Auburn. I, I love going back and watching some of those. Yeah. Well, let's get into the plays, and our multimedia guru, Chris Corder, will be putting these up so we can watch them as we discuss them. And, and Greg and I were discussing uh, which, which plays to talk to you about yesterday. Uh, one of Greg's uh, favorites was this 19-yard completion to Troy Franklin against Utah, 127 left in the first quarter, one by three against cover two. And Greg, since you like this play, um, if you want to discuss uh, what you liked about it and kind of ask Bo. Yeah, what I really, I mean, this was an NFL concept because this was a high low, but why don't you take us through it? I just really love the way you saw it right away in the anticipation, because when you started to turn this ball loose, I mean, I don't think the uh, the receiver, Franklin, was even 
he didn't even reach the uh, the underneath defender yet from his inbreaker. But why don't you take us through this? Yeah, so we had a high low to the boundary and a high low to the field. We have an option route right here by number zero, Bucky Irving, and we have a corner by the tight end. So we're in a three by one formation with a tight end to the boundary to get some man zone indicators. Right here, we know it's going to be zone because they didn't go corners over or anything, and they're just playing soft shell. Um, the boundary safety messes up. Uh, he's supposed to be in the, the boundary half, but he they also had a, a defensive coverage that, that was kind of three poach, and so he would come down and kind of spy and rob to the three by one side, and they play cover three behind it. But the boundary safety messes up, and they try to disguise like a, a five-man rush, but but really they they got three down here with the, the you know a true defensive end at Mike, and so we just count him as a big – um, slides going to the right, and so we're going to be, uh, you know, four for four coming to this guy on the right. They don't quite get the sort because it comes so late, um, so he'll never get to the quarterback. Um, but ultimately, the boundary safety messes up and rolls down, which is fine. I still got my other opposite um, high low, so I just work away from the wheel and the free safety high low that Mike and the Mike stays square shoulder, um, and we have Troy with speed running through the the middle. So. It was a simple option stick dig concept that that was one of my favorites. It's probably my favorite concept because it goes from quick game to intermediate drop back. And you can kind of move through a progression like this. And if one side you don't like, you can just get right to your concept. And this was a big third down and we got a good completion. So what I was going to ask right there, if I could, because uh, I'm familiar with Utah's defense, that was Jonah Ellis, who was the stand up Mike, who's normally a rush DN. So when you see something like that and you said you just deal with him as a big, I mean, does that – does any alarm bell go off in your head when you see something that's not a normal look? Cause, cause he's, you know, he's a stand up kind of joker as I call him, you know, as opposed to his normal DN position. Yeah. That's uh, if, if a, if a defense wants to take their best rusher and put him five yards away from the ball, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Um, <laughs> I think it's a for the offense. Um, you just point him out and you track him kind of like we did. So um, I don't know if it's necessarily what I would do with, with scheme and my best rusher, but um, I put him up on the ball and let him go, you know, one on one with a tackle. But in this case, it was fine. You you know, you get three three down, and um, you you count him as a big, and uh, so both guards are kind of reading him to fan it out. And then, um, you know, this messed up our protection a little bit because you can't go to a true slide. Um, you can, but you can't. You just end up being hot. So we dual sorted this one, um, and, and so they they end up going, you know, four for four to the slide side, and and they. Would have gotten out there to the to the widest, but I think he blitzes so late to where they kind of just let him go free. Yeah, and one reason we chose this play is because you know the a team like the Rams in the NFL, you know, and it's very common in the league. You know, they run these kind of high low concepts all the time, so you're very familiar with this concept. You'll 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 know it when you get to the league for sure. Yeah, I, I love it, and ideally, you know, if the boundary safety stays high. You can work this option route down here at the bottom with with uh, Bucky on the wheel and then high low the corner if he breaks out. But I think that that was uh, one of the best things we utilized was guys in in specific space. And we did uh, similar things over and over. So, um, you know, I was comfortable with it. We had our bread and butters and, you know, ultimately we were efficient with those and had a hard time getting stopped. Uh so, Bo, uh, I asked you at the Combine, you may remember this at the podium, what was your favorite play? Uh, like, if you wanted to show NFL teams one play, uh, what would it be? And it was the 40, 41-year completion of Troy Franklin against Oregon State, 20 seconds left in the first half, where uh, they were up – yeah, you were up 14-7. to Beavers were in cover four. You rolled right, racking to pressure from edge rusher uh, Sion Lolahea from a five-man front with pressure exchange. This is play three, by the way. Oregon State was basically chasing three receivers from trips against one-on-one, -on -one, and you made a huge throw to Franklin on the other side of the field. And you were pointing out just how important that play was. We had had two really long, long drives that, that ended up in touchdowns, so we weren't able to get a huge, um, you know, straight-up jump on the, the, the score. So, so they had scored made it 14-7, to seven, so this was a really important drive for us. Um, we have just a three-level uh, pass called – in our two minute, um, I believe the clock was stopped, but they're showing pressure right here. Both safeties are within, you know, six yards um, and, and they got a little mug front and they're going to end up blitzing this boundary safety and playing quarters behind it. But it essentially turns into cover zero. Um, and so I knew that I had a lot of space with two, you know, man beaters with the post who was going to have leverage and then um, the slot post and then um, Tez on his return route. So 
I knew that I just had to buy some time and pick one of the two. And so they did a good job of running with uh, Tez, but they had the whole field open for Troy. Um, and Troy was on the slot um, nickel. And so I felt like he, you know, had the best advantage. And all I had to do was get some, uh, buy, buy some time and gain some depth. And, um, you know, we were good. And so um, we put Bucky, we went five for five, put Bucky on the widest. They dropped the, the field guy. And so Jackson sorts it out, picks up the other guy who blitzes and Bucky scans back. Um, and so, you know, all you got to do is buy some time and, and get the ball out. It's a good throw. Really good. That's not an easy throw. No. Hey. Cross body all the way down. Uh, play number four is a 20-yard 20, 20 completion to Troy Frank, Franklin against Arizona State. I really love this. 53 seconds up in the second quarter. <laughs> One by three against quarters. Uh, you ran kind of an outpost vert route to the front side. Franklin is a backside receiver and an intermediate over which equated to a deep crosser with Terrence Ferguson uh, post as the routes developed. You had B.J. Green compressing the pocket of the front side on an E.E. stunt with Elijah O'Neal. Just a nice timing throw to Frank with a little flip over the head of, of linebacker Caleb McCullough and into a small opening. I like this one because it was tight window and it was a nice layer. You know, you want to be able to throw with, with touch and, you know, layering the ball to your receiver. And I thought this was just a really good example of that. Yeah, I appreciate it. We uh, practice this a lot. We want to get this against, you know, cover three and they lose the crosser and carry, um, you know, the post and they carry the corner and there's nobody over there in the flat. Uh, but we got it against quarters and, you know, you're still going to flood it out against quarters and you just got to, uh, you know, take care of the Sam and the Mike, but they're going to run out with the the out route. So <clears throat> Ferg's going to run across and, and try to carry that that first safety just exactly like he does, get him to sink and then the, the outside vertical – should be a, just a big post, you know, staying thin, but he's going to run through the corner's toes. We give some eye candy with the the running back because um, we did some um, certain variations with our high lows with the back going out like that. So uh, we just had that for eye candy. And then, you know, we came back with the um, Troy on the uh, delayed over route. And it just turns into a three-level flood. So you're going to read that yep. post safety. He goes back. So now you can high low the next defender. Um, and he gets in that pocket behind the linebackers and, um, the next thing is just, you know, getting him the ball and those like this <clears throat> are the ones you got to hit, you know, you're going to have people. Yeah. That, that to me is a, a, a good pocket. So if you get uh, the ball off and then get bumped, that's, that's a good pocket because, um, it's tough for those linemen to hold up for that long on this long developing play. So, um, that was good, good timing, good protection. And, um, you know, always going to have to, you know, probably have a subtle movement in the pocket to get some, um, extra time and just floating around back there and make sure that you get the ball out because the concept's open. You just got to find time for it. So well, in golf, yeah, in golf parlance. I mean, it's just it's being able to hit that pitching wedge and taking a little bit off, and that's what I, that kind of nuance was what, I, what really impressed me. I mean, the concept is great, but the throw was like, yeah, that's just you know right in there. So where did yeah. your eyes go when you started that play, Bo? Just tell me where your eyes went initially, and you know, and what do you, what are you reading? Goes to the field safety, and then you got to check the um, the flat defender. So if the flat defenders sink, you got to throw the out route over here. Um, but with quarters, you know those guys are going to take the vertical. So now you just got to look at the next um, layer of the defense, and and the mic doesn't get any depth, and um, so you know you can just put it right over him. And you know actually, uh, right after this, I think that the next play we hit a very similar concept to Tez. So we kind of hit two of them back to back. Um, and this was another two minute concept. We started like, I believe on our own three or so when we started going and, um, you know, score before half and, uh, we were great at two minute drills. No, I have it right now. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. No, no, I was just going to say they were. So if you want to go, uh, to the next play, Doug. Yeah, can. real quick. I, I have it in my notes, Bo. You had a 39 yard completion to Tez Johnson against Arizona State. Similar concept was two by two. Johnson was running the backside over with Ferguson as a crossing front side receiver and Bryant running the front side vert. So, it, yeah, you got that's that's something I noticed you guys. Same that. play, different formation. We came right back right. to it and hit it. Yep. Uh, hey, you know, if it works, go for it. <laughs> uh, play number five 22 yard pass to Tez Johnson against Cal, 927 left in the third quarter. Two by two against cover three. You were pressured off play action by in Xavier Calton, who closed the arc with his pressure. You left the pocket to give yourself more time to hit Johnson on the intermediate crosser. And this was another nice timing throw. 
that crosser is a longer developing play. So I, this is just my perspective. I don't think you were just bailing the pocket. I think you were getting free to let the route develop as opposed to checking down and just getting out. Yeah, that's most of the time, you know, it, it's a lot easier to buy time and, and to develop when you, you kind of know you have a route that develops. And this is actually, again, very similar concept to one we just saw. It's yep. Double post with the backside delayed cross. And you want to get this for a single high. You, we end up getting it against man, so it becomes just a runaway, but it's perfect. So um, as soon as Tez clears those defenders right there, he's chasing the heels of the post. And uh, you got to let it, you know, buy time, let it develop. Um, could stay in the pocket, but you never know if there's somebody, you know, from the backside or somebody pushing the pocket. So it's easier just to, um, you know, buy time with, with a lane and, and just get over there and, um, you know, make the throw. You know, it's funny talking about all, all these plays, Bo. You know, one of the things, as I said, I probably have seen 15 or 16 of your games. Um, there's, there was such a decisiveness and efficiency to your game, you know, in terms of being an executor and a ball distributor in a really well-schemed offense. I mean, you you dropped back, you got the ball out, you knew where to go with the ball. Um, you know, and, and it just seemed to me that that's a combination of coaching and just your ability to, to execute at a high level. Yeah, it's uh, preparation, and um, they did a great job of just allowing us to go out there and, you know, do the concepts that we were comfortable with, and um, we knew our progressions and we knew our time. And uh, I feel like, you know, that's that's what playing quarterback is. You know, you're you're uh, there's always a place and always a need for a quarterback who's going to play on time, and get the ball out where it's supposed to, um, you know, be given. I think sometimes um, if you want to live in the, um, you know, the escape world, which I, I have you know, can do in the past, but you don't want to live there. So you want to get get the ball out on time. I think you can take C.J. Stroud, for example. He played on time in college, and the transition to the NFL was he played on time and he was accurate and he, he made some really good throws. So um, that, you know, timing, that efficiency from a quarterback is, you know, honestly that's what, you know, NFL coaches want. They, they want you to play on time. They want you to get the ball where the ball is supposed to go to. And every play has got to read and, um, you know, Honestly, realistically, it shouldn't take that long to get through it. Um, sometimes, like these overs, you know, on a six-man pro, you got to really, you know, hold it as long as you can and, and uh, you know, let it develop. But uh, most of the time, it's it's not quite like that. You take a, a good rhythm three with a hitch or, you know, a quick five with a hitch and, and the ball is coming out. And you're not going to really take sacks. You shouldn't have, um, you know, a whole lot going on. You know, you should be able to get the ball out. And that's what NFL quarterbacking is. That's exactly right. Yep. That's what that's playing the game the right way. Uh, Bo, you just teed me up perfectly for the next play. This is also against Cal. This is play number six. 22 yard pass to Jordan James against Cal. 323 left in the third quarter. One by three against quarters. This is a short pass to a running back, but there's a lot more going on here. Uh, you guys had third and eight from your right. own three right. yard line, which is fun. There's a lot uh, going on here. And yeah, so timing is a big deal here. And most things that happen in this situation are bad. But you first looked to the front side and then the middle. Didn't see anything clearly defined with the, with the timing of the throw. You hit James in the left flat. This, to me, was a nice example of scanning the field without hurrying the throw as a lot of quarterbacks would. You stayed in time to the play. Well, yeah, and if you could go back to the uh, the wide copy. Yeah. The, um, so we have another one of those uh, three levels. Um, we got the concept that's going to take a vertical. You're going to got the, the flood concept and then have a flat. So – Right now with the mic removed, uh, they're essentially four over three. So they're going to play a version of quarters over here. Um, and, and they're going to, you know, it's third and eight. They're going to be softer. You, you're you backed up. You want to get this ball out on time. But you need a first down. So my best option right here um, is to go backside on this high-low because it's going to happen faster. And I got Jordan James on a wheel linebacker who, you know, essentially is going to run a burst, you know, out route. So – when I get back, I'm going to peek this field and see if it's just going to come open and see if it's going to be wide open and can have an explosive. But as soon as those guys kind of uh, soften up and they get kind of tight, my eyes immediately come back to the high low. Um, and uh, Jordan won on his out route. So then you got to take time and, and uh, you know, find the best leverage. And, um, you know, they're pinning their ears back rushing right here. They know we're going to throw it and they're trying to go get a safety. So you don't have all day. And you really don't want to escape and, and move around. So, um, you know, you find the, the best completion, find the quickest outlet and give him the ball. And then he does a great job of catching it and running and getting the first down. 
that's the fine balance though, right? You, you, it's like the, the John Wooden expression, be quick, but don't hurry. You have to let the thing play out, but you also have the pocket compressing. And a lot of guys, there are some guys in the NFL who would just bail there, but you have the, the presence of mind to know I have to go through this whole thing. Yeah. And it's just finding the quickest, you know, quickest progression at that point. Yep. And you were, I assume you felt that inside pressure, like you knew that was there, but you didn't, you, you didn't break down in your mechanics at all. No, the, to me, those are the, the, um, the better of the hits is when they're, you know, kind of free, but you're in the pocket about to throw it and they're just going to give you a good, you know, nudge and say, Hey, I'm right here. could have tackled <laughs> you, but those are the, those are the easy ones. And, um, you know, they don't, they don't quite hurt as bad, but, um, that you can definitely get in some situations to where, you know, they're coming from full head of steam and they're coming off a of blitz and they can really get you. Um, but yeah, that you, you just gotta, you know, stay in the pocket, even though it's coming tighter and find the easiest throw and, and be accurate so he can catch and run. Yeah. Cause that's a major part of the NFL. As I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a lot of moneyed pockets, noisy pockets, people around you, and you've got to maintain your, your mechanics and your fundamentals and your discipline and you still have to throw the football. Right. Uh, this has been great, but one final question. What is your NFL team going to get in Bonex? What 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 is the quarterback for that team going to be? Oh, that's a great question. They're going to get, you know, an ultimate competitor. They're going to get a guy that, you know, can go out there and um, be efficient. Uh, I'm going to prepare at a high level. I'm going to go out there and have passion for the game, and it's going to show as I prepare and as I go into the game. Um, going to be ready to play, going to go out there and, um, you know, be smart, know where the ball is supposed to go, be efficient. And then, you know, ultimately, you know, they're going to get a, a quarterback that can make the throws and can make plays um, in space when he needs to. And um, I'm excited about what's next. I'm excited to go, you know, be the extra piece to a puzzle that, um, you know, wants to be, a, a, you know, a, a Super Bowl contention team. But um, I think that there's a lot that I'm going to have to, you know, process and learn as I go. And I'm excited to be coached at a high level. Um, I'm excited to have, you know, NFL coaches who have been doing it for so long um, teach me what they've, you know, taught so many other guys in the past. And um, I'm just going to be like a sponge and, you know, take it all in and um, make sure that I'm learning each and every day and, um, you know, never going to have all the answers and, and can always be better um, until I've, I've mastered the thing and I probably won't ever master it. So I'll always be in a learning stage, but um, I'm excited and I'm excited to go out there and compete and I'm, I'm Actually, you know, it's been a, a, a little slow time throughout um, this process. I'm just excited to get back on the field again. <laughs> it's all about ball. Greg, anything else from you? No, I think we're good. This was awesome, Bo. We really appreciate you joining us. This was a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to following you, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll talk again. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Thanks for having me. Thanks all so right. much, man.